Hello everybody, my name is Volkans and today we will talk about how to paint a black hole. Ok, it should be a bit more detailed than that. Unfortunately, until now, there is only one scientifically correct black hole photo. And let's admit, although its mere existence is a huge breakthrough in astronomy, it's visually not that exciting. There are, however, different depictions available on the internet, and I wanted to create something like this. The idea is to take a photo, set the position of the black hole, and distort the image so that it shows the immense gravity field around the black hole. My result looks like this. In this video I will explain how the algorithm works. So, without further ado, let's get started. So what were my goals? I wanted to show the power of gravity emphasizing the extreme conditions by visualizing high energy levels around the black hole. As the black hole also bends light, I wanted to show the entire star field, even those objects that are behind the black hole. A further indication of huge gravity should be the stretching of light sources into arcs, the closer to the black hole, the wider the arc. I wanted to create the program in Python using the Pygame library for graphics. In my model, the gravity field is a large circle with the black hole in its middle. Pixels within this circle will be affected by gravity and pixels outside the circle will remain unchanged. Note that this includes pixels behind the black hole. So at first I wanted the program to work like a kind of morphing, transfer a circle into a ring and at the same time smear each pixel into an arc. Smearing is not simply multiplying. If we create an arc of 10 pixels from one pixel and the color remains unchanged, then this arc is 10 times brighter than the original pixel. If we add overlapping arcs up, the result would be a blinding white color. So brightness has to be corrected to keep the total light consistent and not lose details. The superposition of all the calculated arcs would create the desired effect. As usual, the first attempt failed miserably. Due to rounding errors when converting to integers, I could neither ensure that each pixel in the target image is influenced by the same number of pixels in the source image, nor that it is colored at all. The result looks terrible. I decided to turn the whole thing around and go through the target image pixels instead. Inverting the smear effect is not obvious. What I did has nothing to do with it in the mathematical sense, but I wanted to fake it, not make it. The point is not to make an accurate model, but to create an image that looks cool. Again, I was using arcs. Each pixel in the target image gets its color from the weighted sum of pixel colors along an arc in the source image. The closer the target pixel is to the edge of the black hole, the wider the source arc. Brightness consistency is an issue here as well. The engine uses nonlinear distortion for almost all effects. Gravity is inversely proportional to the square of distance between objects, so I choose power functions. The main advantage is that power functions behave in a predictable manner in the 0 to 1 region. The start and end points are fixed. This makes the usage of these functions very convenient when creating distortion effects. With the proper selection of the exponent we can emphasize or suppress regions and also control the dynamics of change. In the following figures and tables, RB denotes the radius of the black hole and R field denotes the radius of the area affected by its gravity. The projection formula maps the entire circle onto the area between the black hole and the edge of the field. The distortion is much stronger near the edge of the black hole. The light from behind the object is crunched into a narrow ring around the black hole's edge. This creates the impression of a strong gravity lens. Simply by changing the exponent used in the formula, we can create an exaggerated effect. Now we come to the smear or stretch effect. The main question is, what should be the center angle of each arc that is used to calculate the color of the given pixel? I use the power function with a very small exponent to make the result highly nonlinear, creating wide arcs near the black hole's edge. This also contributes to the strong gravity lens illusion. So how do we create the high energy effect? I decided to brighten up colors using a function similar to the previous when getting close to the black hole's edge. Colors saturate to white, which creates a thin bright ring directly around the black hole, 
also improving contrast. The result looks cool. Let's see that again in slow motion. Now we have the main part covered, but there are a few more details that I'd like to talk about. First of all, the number of pixels in an arc. Considering how the result looks, it is surprisingly low and it is not even the highest when near the black hole's edge. The reason for this is that the arcs that contribute to the smaller strings around the black hole are behind the black hole and have a small radius, and the circle with a small radius cannot contain many pixels. Although I said that I want to include all pixels behind the black hole when calculating the effect, this is actually by far not the case. Due to the extreme distortion near the black hole's edge, only a fraction of the original pixels influence the result, especially in the innermost rings. Still, the image looks valid. Let's have a look at some parts of the actual Python code. At start, I calculate the average brightness of the affected area. This is used for an additional effect that I haven't mentioned before, to increase contrast. We will come back to this later. In the main loop we check a square of 2 times R field by 2 times R field pixels in the target image. Those pixels that are further away from the center of the black hole than R field are left unchanged. Pixels that are closer than RB will be pure black. Here comes the actual fun part. To process an arc in the source image, first we have to identify its direction relative to the center of the black hole. Then we calculate its center angle, its radius and finally the number of pixels that it contains. Note that I select the center angle step lower than necessary to make sure that no pixel is skipped due to rounding errors. As I said before, the program uses a weighted sum of pixels within an arc to calculate a pixel in the target image. At this point I initialize the sums and other variables and also calculate the contrast correction factor. This is the loop that calculates a single pixel. To walk along the arc, the sine and cosine functions are used. Last px and last py ensure that each pixel is considered only once. For weighting I use a simple triangle function where the middle pixel has the highest weight. Note that the contrast correction is performed on the source pixel colors, while the brightness correction will be performed on the resulting color. And this is exactly what happens here before setting the actual pixel in the target image. That wasn't so hard, was it? If you'd like to check it out, you can download the source code from my homepage, I placed the link in the description below. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please like, share and subscribe. And see you soon. Bye!